for example, if someone murders they put him in prison. I mean, I mentioned that a long time. May Allah forgive me. I want prison in this country. This prison here is a holiday inn. I'm not a glamorizer here. Don't go to prison. Okay. But literally, it's a holiday inn. You, I remember when I was in the streets, I used to eat once a day. You know? They have three times a day. You have television. If you're good, they give you PlayStation 2 at that time. Then you have association, association. You play football. Then you go gym. It's a nice life. You don't have to pay tax. I don't have to pay bills, especially the bills too high now. Rent. Uh, uh, rent. One second, one second. Uh, one second. You don't have to pay rent, you know, none of that. So, uh, so this is Sharia law. Sharia law is coming to protect us. Do you think there's any country with this? What country do you think is the most, like, living to the Sharia law the most? Saudi. I believe Saudi doing it. They have mistakes, no doubt. But, you know, they're not perfect. But Saudi is the most, con the, the, the country that implements Sharia. Do you think it's possible for it to be completely 100% Sharia? Yeah, inshallah, like interest, interest not allowed, they allow it, may Allah forgive them, which is haram, it's not permissible to do that. And when you look to Islamic Sharia, wallahi, it's good for you and for me. It's good for everyone. But why people hate it, like I said, either ignorant or themselves are criminals who want to do crimes and go, get free. For example, it, I've noticed when, I, when people have problems with Sharia, I see they, they, they argue and they defend the criminals more than the victim. I think, bro, what about the victim, man? The woman being been raped. And you're focusing about the guy. Doesn't make any sense to me. That's my point. My point is, when Allah legislates something, there's no bias. And the, the, I'll, I'll tell you what is the difference between Islamic Sharia, Sharia, uh, divine Sharia, not Sharia law. Sharia law doesn't make any sense. It's like saying, uh, insane human. Insane is Arabic term for human being. You know? So, divine Sharia. Divine Sharia, the example analogy I give, is like take, uh, 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 treating yourself with a natural remedy. Or, because natural remedy, what it does, it, uh, it treats you from the roots. You know, when you go to someone naturalist, he will tell you, look, let me see what you're eating, what is your diet, and so on. When you go to GP, he gives you what? Paracetamol. What is a painkiller do? Painkiller does not deal with the root, with the problem from the roots. Yeah, what, it, yeah, what it does, just maintain your, or manage your symptoms, or covers it up. But the Islamic Sharia deals with the root problems. That's why we have something called Saddu Babu Dara'i'ah. What evil leads to evil, it's evil. So if I know by me bringing the singers here to this country and paying the money to gl glamorize uh, uh, killing and uh, being a gangster and uh, uh, disrespecting women and so on, I say, wait, wait. This is going to create a generation who start disrespecting their sisters and a woman. So I'm going to stop that. No, I give them money and glamorize them. Then I said, yeah, you, you make your own choice. No. I care about the people because sometimes people cannot make up, especially when they're in drugs and so on. You understand? So my point to bring you back, when you look to Islamic Sharia, when you look to the prophecy that Prophet Muhammad said, he gives us solid proof why Islam is the truth. And when it is the truth, whoever goes and gets his falsehood. Christianity it doesn't make any sense. God became a man, then God died for your sins, but God created with the sin. The Bible, the Old Testament, God tell the, the, the Israelites to kill children because something happened 500 years ago. That is haram in Islam. Allah said, La Likewise, the King Harrod. Huh? The King Harrod. No, in Samuel, Saul. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, Samuel. Likewise, God regrets. E even the prophets, who are our best, uh, best example, the role model to follow, they are worse than Stalin. You know Stalin? Stalin, Mo, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hitler and so on. So the point here is, that when you look to, uh, subhanAllah, to Islamic teaching and what Prophet Muhammad SAW came with and so on, subhanAllah is a perfect way of life. And you look to Hinduism, they don't even believe in God, it's a philosophy. You know, but Islamic is good for you, for you intellectually, spiritually, physically, socially, which is, everything is connected. Huh? Allah SWT, when He creates, Islam is not just for you, sister, or for me to be inside the mosque, no. Islam for the government, to implement it, you know, to implement Islam. And the outcome of implementing Islam looks at the crime rate in Saudi and the Muslim countries and compare it to the Western world, which we call civilized country. I don't know what it means. I want to understand what does it mean civilized. Is to have a clean road? That's something good. But if you have a clean road and a man sleeping, sleeping with an with animal or animal, there's just crazy stuff happening, you know, that's not a civilization. That's why Islam came to take people from true darkness into the true light and from true backwardness into true civilization. And there's many prophecies I can give you now 
to show you what Islam is the truth and why Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, is a true messenger of Allah. I can give you two incidents to show you Muhammad is not a liar. Okay? One of them. A man came to Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. This man was married to a woman that she doesn't like him anymore. And he wants to stay with her. He loves her. I mean, loved her and wants to stay with her. So he used to follow her in the streets. She doesn't want him anymore. Prophet Muhammad Wasallam went to her and he told her, why don't you go back to him? And remember, she believes he's a prophet of Allah. And she must obey him. That's the foundation, yeah? Then she said to her own messenger of Allah, are you telling me as a messenger of Allah, or you just try to mediate? He said, no, if he was a liar, imagine I'm a liar, came to your prophet. And he's my friend, yes? And he's married to you, to another sister. Then what are we going to say? He's my friend, I'm going to be on his side. So I'm going to lie to you. So listen, God told me, you need to go back to him. But what he said to her, I said, no, God never told me. I'm just trying to help. But if you want to go back, go back. If not, it's up to you. That is not characteristics of a liar. No way. Another incident. During his lifetime, he had a son called Ibrahim. His son died. Ibrahim died same day when there was an eclipse. You would meet there was an eclipse, yeah? His companions were not familiar with the eclipse. So they tried to connect the dots. His son passed away, there is an eclipse. So they said the reason there is an eclipse is because Prophet Muhammad's son passed away. If he was a liar, remember the liar would try to utilize any opportunity to back up his claim. What he said, he said, no, he has nothing to do with no one's life, no one's death. When you see it's a sign from Allah, go pray. What he did, he connected them to Allah. And there's many incidents when you see this man is a truthful person. Bear in mind, his own people used to call him a sadiqul amin, the trustworthy, the truthful person. So when you look at Prophet Muhammad's biography, look at his legislation. Biography means how we lived. How we lived. Like the example I gave, the incident, you know. Even the Quran. In the Quran, Allah said, Noon, wal qalami wa ma yasturoon, ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon, wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon, wa inna ka la ala khuluqin azim. Allah said, Allah swore by his creation, because no, we have to take it over Allah. But Allah, if, want, if, if Allah wants to show us the importance of his creation, he will take oath by it. He said, oh Muhammad, you're not a crazy person. And you are upon a great conduct. When a, once Prophet Muhammad, والسلام, he was walking, a man grabbed him from behind and fooled him. His companions got angry. Even if he had the mark with the, of the pulling. He turned to him, he said, may Allah have mercy upon my brother Moses, Musa, the Prophet Moses. He said he was harmed more and he was patient. And the Prophet Muhammad gave him what? The man said, give me some money. Prophet gave him a sheep. The man went back to his people. He said, I came from someone who does not fear poverty. He didn't say to him, you crazy man out there, you, you know? Even when you look at, uh, what they call it, uh, 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 the story of, uh, I was going to mention the story of uh, 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 Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, his best companion. His best companion brought his father to Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad said, why do you do this? You should call me. We go to him. He's older than us, you know? Even Prophet Muhammad, when he was in Medina, a Jewish man had a problem with a Muslim. So a Muslim, they want Prophet Muhammad to judge between them. Prophet Muhammad judged in favor of the Jewish man. If he was a liar, he's going to defend his Muslim brother. He's a follower. He said, no, he said the truth between him. That's why even the Jewish people in the, at that time, they never used to go back to their rabbis because their rabbis used to take bribes. They said, no, let's go back to Muhammad. Even they don't believe he's a prophet, they said, let's go back to him. He will judge us accordingly with justice, you know? So there's many, many proofs I can give you when you look to any religion, it is no way from God. So you don't have to, because you cannot spend all your life studying all religions. It's too much. But this is sufficient for someone who, with a sound reasoning, and I believe you are one of them, sound natural inclination to, in, to incline towards Islam. What do you think what I said so far? Does it make sense? Yeah, I get that. I just, before, so like a week ago, I spoke to my friend who was a Muslim. So I just want to put here, I have many things holding. Go yeah, on. he was a Muslim and then he left the religion. And I told him, oh, maybe I'm a little bit interested in Islam. And I told him, like, some of my concerns. And then his views were like, he was saying, when Muhammad got the messages from God, he, like, how can you say that he didn't change and manipulate them before he put them in? To told them to people and made it into the Quran. Like, how did how do you know he didn't change his opinion? Like, put his opinion into this into what came from Allah. 
Yeah, that's, uh, firstly, we have to establish that this man is a trustworthy, truthful, yeah, honest, okay? Secondly, we, I'll just give you an example of Muhammad who was not manipulating. One of them, the story, where he could have told to the woman. He could have told her, Allah told me. Did he say that? He didn't say that. You with me? So we can see many incidents where Muhammad, if he was a liar, he would have said something with his own opinion. For example, the Quran is a proof that is not from Prophet Muhammad. Because there's verse in the Quran rebuking Prophet Muhammad for making some mistakes. Hang on. Uh, uh, rebuking is the correct word to use. Is itab in Arabic. I, I hope I'm, I'm correct, uh, translating correct. Uh, itab, Allah, not hardly, but Allah correcting him. Hang on. If it's Muhammad making this Quran, why is going to make himself look he's making mistakes? Do you understand? That's why Ummuna Aisha, his wife, she said there's many verses to prove that Muhammad was an honest man. One of the verses, Allah said, Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu, ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbika. O oh, Muhammad, convey from that which you have from your Lord. And one of them, there's a verse which our mother Aisha, his wife, Mala, be pleased with her. She said, this verse is so clear, Prophet Muhammad did not manipulate. Which verse? Prophet Muhammad, there was a woman, there was, he had a son called Usama, Afwan, Zayd ibn Haritha. Afwan means sorry, okay, in Arabic. Afwan, yeah. Yeah, you know it, okay. <laughs> Zayd ibn Haritha. He was married to a woman called Zainab ibn Tujahsh. Zayd ibn Haritha, he was his stepson before Islam. Uh, ad so adopted son, adopted son. Islam came to remove this, yeah, take care of the orphans, treat them nice, but they're not your son. They have their own parents. So Zayd ibn Haritha, and by the way, to mention another story, Zayd ibn Haritha, when his parents came to look for him, when they found that he's in Mecca, they came to him, they said to him, we are your parents, let's come, go on. He said, no, 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 no. He said, what I saw from this man, I will never exchange him with no one. They said, Zayd, how dare you? This is, we are your, your parents, your family. He said, no, 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 I'm not going to leave this man. He's truthful and trustworthy. So, again, this is another story to show this man is a truthful person. How a man is going to choose someone, and he was not forcing him or something, he was taking care of him. Anyway, when he, he was married to, uh, 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 Zayd ibn Haritha was married to Zayn ibn Tujash. They had problems. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Allah told him, they're going to get divorced, and you're going to marry Zayn ibn Tujash. But at that time, the, from the Arab pagans teaching, which has nothing to do from God, that you're not allowed to get married to the ex-wife of your adopted son. But Allah removed, he's not, she, he's not his son, yes? So even Prophet Muhammad was finding it very hard to, 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 to deal with it. Allah revealed the verse that Prophet Muhammad is hesitating to mention it. Wait, wait. He's, if I'm a liar, because we have to understand, they, they, there's no one worse in lying than someone claiming to be a prophet of God, you know. Regardless how much you lie, if you claim to be a prophet of God, you are the worst liar. Because you are saying, what you what, what, do this because God told me. How do you know that? Because I know you believe that when Jesus comes back to earth, that's the day, is that? From the size of the hour. Yeah. Yeah. So what if somebody comes out to you and is like, I'm Jesus? That's a good point, but we have criteria. What's in the, the Quran, in the Sunnah, the criteria is Jesus will come from Syria, will be descending. He will see descending with the angels holding him. Also, he has a curly hair, okay? And his hair is like just have evolution, okay? And there's many, uh, what they call it, uh, many signs before that. So, so we have evolution. Evolution, it's like he it's like just had the water, you understand? So Allah, so, so there is, that's why you, you, don't get it wrong, you know? There's people who claim to be Jesus before. Yeah, yeah. But remember, yeah. Allah exposed them. And one of them, he was uh, in a time of the Khilaf al Islamiyyah. He claimed to be Jesus. <laughs> so they took him to the leader. The leader said, I'm going to kill you. He said, no, no, I'm joking, I'm not Jesus. <laughs> he changed, you know. So Jesus, when he comes, there's before him, Mahdi comes. So there's many signs, you know. Even some people claim to be Mahdi. Huh? After. No, no, Mahdi. After the Mahdi. No, no, Mahdi before. No, no. Uh, yeah, Mahdi. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I said Mahdi yeah. So. So what we're saying, so there, there is, alhamdulillah, and Allah exposed them. Because remember, look, something I was going to mention to establish, Allah is the most wise, you know. The most wise will never leave us with confusion. Yes, Allah will allow some people to, as a test, to see who's going to stand firm or not. But Allah eventually will expose them. At the time of Prophet Muhammad, there were other people claiming to be a prophet of God. But Allah exposed them and humiliated them. Except Prophet Muhammad. 
Did you know there is a verse in the Quran? Allah mentioned the Prophet. This verse was revealed when the Prophet Muhammad was in a battlefield. Yeah? And his companions used to guard him outside his tent. The verse was revealed that Allah will protect you, O Muhammad. He came out, he told his companions, leave me. Imagine in a time of battle, his enemies, they waited for any opportunity to kill him. And he said, leave me. And Allah revealed a verse in the Quran, that O Muhammad, you're not going to, want to die. And you will not be killed until you convey the message. When this verse was revealed, and Allah will protect you. When this verse was revealed, Prophet Muhammad was not behind hiding in the fortress. Because I can hide in my house for 25 years and I said, look, Allah told me, and I have many enemies outside, by the way, yeah? and Allah told me I'm not going to be killed. But I'm hiding. But imagine to you, Allah told me I'm not going to be killed. And guess where I am? I'm in a battle fighting with the sword. And I'm telling you, I'm going to convey my message. And historically, from the Muslim sources and the non-Muslim sources, that what has occurred with the Prophet Muhammad. Before he died, Islam was completed. He looked at his companions leading the prayer. This is not a statement of someone is a normal man. You understand? Because when the people lie to the Prophet of God, they always say something vague or they hide and so on. But what Prophet Muhammad said and, and, and the prophecy that came with and so on is so perfect. So if Prophet Muhammad wants to manipulate, there's many situations when we see that he was good for him, but what he did, he said something which go and get him as a human being. From a human angle, like example, if I'm a, like, I'm a liar, I'm not going to start correcting myself because I think if I do correct myself, Remember, these people believe I'm a prophet of God. You're going to think about them. This guy is lying, man. Right? Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, in Surah Al-Haqqa, وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيمِ لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينَ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ فَمَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ عَنْهُ حَاجِزِينَ Allah mentioned, oh Muhammad, if you make up anything about, about Allah, Allah will take you, severely and destroy you. Meaning, straight away, as for him dying after, by poison or whatever, uh, this is not the verse. The verse means straight away, by the fact that Prophet, and Prophet Muhammad said, Islam will spread far east, far west. Historically, Islam spread all the way to China, and all the way to Andalusia, Spain, even now America and so on. Again, they, they, you know, that's why as a Muslim, we don't believe Islam is the truth, because I had a dream. In my house, I was sleeping as a sister, I believe Islam is the truth. Why Shamsi, brother Shamsi? Because I had a dream our Prophet Muhammad came to me. Or oh, one day I was in prison, you know, I saw Jesus or oh, Muhammad. No, we don't work like that. Alhamdulillah. This personal experience, okay? But Islam is based upon universal proofs, which you and I and all of us here, we can analyze and come to conclusion. That must be the truth. Anyone with a sound reasoning inclined towards it. So what this person said, the biography of Prophet Muhammad and the Quran refute him about Prophet we manipulating or adding, no, no. You can see clearly, even there is a verse, Allah said, Abasa wa tawalla an jaa'ahu al-a'ma wa ma yudrika la'allahu yazzakka aw yaddakkaru fa tanfa'ahu al-dhikra amma man istagna fa anta lahu tasadda wa ma alayka alla yazzakka wa amma man jaa'aka yas'a wa huwa yakhsha fa anta anhu talaha kalla innaha tadhkira until the end of the verses. Allah said about a man, so what happened? A, a, a man came to Prophet Muhammad who was a blind man. Prophet, he, he, that he's a, his companion. Prophet Muhammad was busy preaching to the Arab pagans, to the head, to the leaders. So he came to him and he wanted to ask him, Prophet Muhammad was like, wait, wait, you know, because his follower, wait, let me, I'm busy with them. Allah sent the verses correcting. And Prophet Muhammad said, you should not do that. Those guys, they're not going to listen to you. They are stubborn. Focus on those who are seeking the truth. If he's a liar, why is he going to mention this verse? He's going to hide it or going to change it. He didn't. So that's why one of our scholars, there's two of them, Ibn Hazm al Zahiri, may Allah have mercy upon him, and Ibn Taymiyyah al Harrani, may Allah have mercy upon him. He said, anyone study the biography and the history of Prophet Muhammad with sincerity, they will come to the conclusion this man must be the Prophet of the Most High. Make sense? Alhamdulillah. So become Muslim. Except Islam is truth. One more thing. Okay, one more thing. Except then, Islam. And then I'll probably need to go. Okay, no, 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 to go. Except. <laughs> yeah, we're going to come, brother. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. All right, go ahead. The thing about the 92 virgin girls, I don't like it. 92-ish? 92, 92 virgin. No, we have not 92 mobile. If uh, T-Mobile. There's no virgin, T-Mobile. I'm joking. You didn't get it. There's virgin and T-Mobile. Yeah, yeah. 
لا لا وي دو 72 فيرجن باي ذا واي ذير نو حديث اتس نوت اتس نوت ترو 72 فيرجن اوف ذا مارتا سمون دايز اند يو جيت 72 فيرجن